We are recording, so we're good. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Stephanie Clark. I'm the Family Program Director here at Habitat for Humanity of Bucks County. I just said here, but really I'm sitting at home as you are all as well. Uh, more than anything, we hope that you are safe and well with all the storms, the pandemic and everything else. So we're really excited that Olga St. Pierre and Jessica Lamer from the Olga St. Pierre Keller Williams Group and their team is sharing their expertise with us tonight. Uh, we have some folks who are here through Habitat for Humanity of Bucks County, and we have others that are here from the general public. So welcome and thank you for joining us. Habitat for Humanity of Bucks County is a nonprofit. We were founded in 1990 to serve our community, primarily to provide affordable home ownership to those in our community who are already here who want to put down roots. So you can imagine that with homeownership being our main goal in our mission of, of empowering families and building communities, that Olga and Jessica are a great partner in our community because we're all working toward the great end of, a for, of, a, of homeownership and everything that comes along with that. As well as our homeownership program, we have an affordable home repair program. So if you or someone you know is looking to do affordable home repairs so that they can stay in their homes with safety and dignity for and much more independence than, than they've been experiencing lately, please reach out to Habitat Bucks as well. And of course, we have our resource, which I know that Olga and Jessica are going to talk about. They are our home goods donation centers that are open to the public Tuesdays through Saturdays. We have all kinds of, of wonderful things for your home, furnishings, furniture, books. We even have home building materials like doors and windows and even the kitchen sink. So as I've been trapped in my home for all these many months with you, I'm super excited to learn and get encouraged and empowered to learn how to declutter my home stress-free. I started doing a little bit, but I know that once we get off this presentation with Olga and Jess that we're going to really just fire it up and um, I think we should all come back and post pictures maybe later to see how we did. So if you're new to Habitat, thank you for joining us. And for those who are joining us through um, Habitat Bucks and through our Almost Home program, our financial empowerment program, we're so glad that you're here tonight. And Olga and Jessica, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. I'm really looking forward to everything you have to share. Well, great introduction. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Olga St. Pierre, and uh, Jess Lamer is my uh, director of operations. She's on this wor uh, workshop as well. So, what I'm going to do is share my screen with you. The workbook that I am sharing with you, you don't have to write anything frantically down. We are sharing everything with you um, in the next day or so. We're going to email all of you a link to this workshop so you can go back and listen to it again if you want, as well as a copy of the workbook because it has tons of links and tons of helpful information. So let me do that right now. Let me know that you can see everything. You can you see everything? Yeah, it looks great. All right, great. All right. All right, perfect. So let's jump right in. I just wanted to give you a quick introduction about myself and Jessica. We have been uh, licensed and full-time agents in our community for the last 11 years, and we have uh, clients that we help in New Jersey as well as PA. Uh, and our team mission is truly to, and we truly believe that anyone with some planning and budgeting, and Stephanie will agree with me, can become a homeowner. And once you become a homeowner, we help you become a responsible and sustainable homeowner. And that's why we're always out in the community, out and about, helping you uh, understand what that means. So for, uh, our workshop today is part of this series that we offer to help you with uh, your home ownership as well as buying a home. Uh, we do have extensive concierge service to help you if you are interested in moving somewhere else in the United States and Canada, your friends, family, coworkers, and please don't hesitate to use us as your resource. We are a virtual Yellow Pages nowadays. If you need any recommendations for contractors, for uh, accountants, for some muscle to help you get stuff out of the attic or the basement, we are here to help you with recommendations. So. Let's jump right in. Here is what we are talking about today. Why is decluttering important? When I was originally doing the research for this workshop, because it was something that people, you know, clients have asked me to put together, 
uh, what I realized is that decluttering is not just fun. It's not just something that we should do you know, once in a while. Um, actually, decluttering is very, very important to our health and well-being, okay? Um, a couple of statistics for you that I think you'll find helpful. Number one, 80% of what we own, we rarely use. Does that ring a bell? I think after you walk out of this workshop, you're going to look around you and you're like, this is absolutely true. So, and it's, you know, what we own, what we use, what we wear, it's, uh, that statistics is very, very accurate in just about everything about our lives. People spend about 55 minutes a day looking for stuff. Does mm -hmm. that ring a bell? Right? So when you put that in perspective, that is two weeks out of the year. That's two vacations. And now people are actually making money on, uh, you know, people who are looking for things. You know, there's a little square and then there's another little charge case that you can actually put on your remotes or your keys. So that way, you know, you push the button and you can find it somewhere in your home. So, and the big one that was exciting for me is that if you do declutter, it can reduce your housework by up to 40%. So I was very excited to hear about that. I think all of us are very excited about that. So the goal awesome. today, oh yeah. So the goal for today is we're talking about why decluttering is very, very important. I'm going to give you some very simple ideas to help you understand that decluttering does not have to be heavy. With a room by room guide, we're gonna talk about the big four, you know, what we're keeping, what are we getting rid of, how we're going to do all of that. And then you will actually have an action plan when we're done today to help you and figure out what does that mean for you, right? Because everybody has their own plans. So why are we talking about decluttering? Here's what's important, right? And help me maybe chime in if you think you have any other reasons, right? But this is what I'm hearing with my clients. I don't know where to start. It grows over time if it's left alone. And we all have stuff, right? We have mail that comes in six times a week. And if we don't keep up with it, it's gonna get piled up. And with time, it does become too much. It's painful, we don't know where to start. We, a lot of people have a hard time understanding and knowing, you know, all of the mail that we have come in. Like, what, what are we keeping for how long? And we're definitely talking about that today. So just a little bit of psychology here that I think is important is that Everything uh, in our lives, you know, it affects our happiness um, and the things that we have, they affect us on two levels. One is subconscious and the other one is conscious level. So easy way to think about it is when you get up in the morning, you do things on autopilot, right? You head to the bathroom, maybe you take a shower, then you head and get your coffee, right? And you start reading a newspaper. Those are the things we do on autopilot because it has become such a habit that it's like ingrained, right? That's the subconscious level. But then you open up the fridge and you realize that you have no more milk for your coffee and you actually have to stop yourself and you're like, wait a minute, I need to put that on my grocery list. And you have to stop and you think about it because it's not part of your routine, it's actually disruption. So that is a conscious level, okay? So a lot of the time, the clutter affects us on the subconscious level, which is worse because that is the level that you don't think about, which means that affects us like almost like a, a you know, hamster wheel. It's a never ending loop that just sits there in the back of our minds. And, you know, it, we, we think about it. We just don't realize it. We're spending the energy. Okay. So clutter weighs us down. Clutter can absolutely be a source of stress depression, health issues, right? When you can't sleep well because you have clutter in your bedroom, family problems and home disrepair. You know, if you have lots of papers and you don't take care of things, you can get critters who love paper and that's where they're going to bury and create problems. So as clutter accumulates, your energy is going to stagnate. And what I mean by that is you walk into your garage and you have all this stuff and your mood sours, right? That's what I mean by negative and like I'm stagnant energy. So what I'm asking you today is to think about clearing clutter, a clutter as uh, a way to release the things that you don't love so that way you can make room for the new passions of interest. Okay. So I'm assuming because you were excited and you're here for this workshop, you actually are thinking about decluttering and you want to do something in your own life. So, all right, let's talk about it. So your game plan. I am a big believer in planning and notebooks. Okay. And I'm actually asking you to physically find a notebook. It can be a notepad or a notebook, and it's going to be your decluttering game plan notebook, okay? 
because the goal is to help you start and actually get a plan and get it moving forward. So here's overall what we're looking for. Number one, the most important thing, you need to set a time and figure out when your first appointment for decluttering is going to take place. And right, so experts say, take an hour. Now, if you think an hour is too much, okay, then do half hour, right? Do a half hour, but you need to decide, you need to make that an appointment, you need to put that in your appointment book, so that way it is there and, and it's a set in place, okay? Next, I'm going to ask you to get a timer, okay? And it can be something very simple. Here's my timer, okay? It's a regular kitchen timer, okay? Now, I'm going to get rid of all of your excuses today, and I'm going to tell you that you cannot use your phone. Our phones are the biggest distractors that we have, so you cannot use your phone as a timer. The other best options are your kitchen timer, and you can also use your microwave, maybe your oven, okay? Next, you also need to get comfortable, right? Comfortable as in clothing, because the other good news that I have for you is that when you declutter, you're going to burn calories. It's a workout. You're going to be running around, you're going to be moving things, you're going to be picking up boxes, and you're going to work up some sweat. So whatever you're comfortable with, shorts, yoga pants, sneakers, get dressed, and that's what you're wearing. Next, you actually need to grab something to eat and have something to drink, preferably water. The reason being, again, you're going to work up some calories, and I don't want you to take a break during your one-hour time slot and say to yourself, well, I'm going to just take a break, I'm going to eat. Well, guess what? You're not going to come back because you're gonna get distracted by something else. And what we're trying to do is honor that one hour. It is an appointment that you have with yourself. All right, so then put on some music, light a candle, make it fun, whatever that may be, and grab your notebook and be ready to jot down some notes and reminders and plan. The goal is for you to be focused for that one hour and write down where are you working, what you're doing, where are you going to stop, right? Do you have maybe things that you want to donate or give to your family members? Write those things down because you're going to forget, okay? So that's the plan. Next, we're going to work on our tools. This is important because we want to be fully prepared, okay? The tools are trash can, recycle can are the biggest ones, and then also boxes. If you want to use totes, if you want to use boxes, and we have them labeled, right? Different categories. We're, we're keeping things. We're going to donate things. You are allowed to have an undecided box. Throw away and sell, okay? Now, the goal for your one hour time slot is not to put everything in the undecided box. The goal is to put a little bit in each box, right? Because that's what we're doing. We're trying to make progress, okay? And a couple of things just to keep in mind, okay? You actually gonna have to pick up your things and you know, usually your first thought, what, you, what you're holding is going to be your best you know, intuition decision making. So if it brings you joy, makes you smile and it's supporting your vision and what you're trying to accomplish with doing your decluttering, you keep it. If it's going to give you, you, know, give you sadness and not make you happy, make you want to be, you know, sad, guilty, then let's, let's figure out how we're going to get it out of our life and out of our house, okay? So then you're staying focused for that one hour, and when you're done, guess what? You're done, okay? If you don't want to keep going, you don't have to. If you want to keep going, that's great. At that time, I'm going to ask you to grab your notebook and just write down some thoughts. It has, a, it has been proven a fact that your brain thinks that when you're writing things down, it's making some kind of progress. So let's make sure that we write down where did we stop? When is our next time when we're having an appointment with ourselves for our next decluttering session? Do, do we have some pieces that we need to give to family members that we need to give them a call and let them know to grab it, right? So wh what is it, where did you end up, okay? So, and you know what, if you're feeling sad about something that you grabbed, maybe something that you know, it brings memories, write them down as well. You know, journaling is great to kind of get your thoughts down on paper. They're like emotional wipers when you write things down and you kind of help yourself get through whatever it is that you're feeling, okay? So 
And once you're done, you're going to pat yourself on the shoulder, have some ice cream, whatever it may be. Another question that I get quite often is like, well, I don't know where to start. What, what, where am I going to go? Like, I know it's the whole house. My recommendation to you is start with your favorite room in the house. What is your favorite room? Is it your bedroom? Is it your kitchen? Start in that room. It's going to help you feel that much better knowing that you're working in your favorite room and making progress. All right, so let's jump in. Let's talk about our room by room guide. I'm also giving you some suggestions here on some of the items that I have found helpful and I had other clients that uh, found, we found helpful and I'm going to give you, once we sent out this workbook, we're going to have links to these items on Amazon if you want to buy them because the goal is, right, the goal is to declutter and keep it that way, right? It's not to make room and then pile more things on there because that just defies the whole purpose of what we're doing. So let's start with the kitchen. Okay, number one, the rule is please do not tackle the whole kitchen at once. Right? If that's the room that you want to start, let's start with one or two drawers. And if you're happy with what you accomplished and you still have time left on your timer, then keep going. Let's do another cabinet. Okay. So refrigerator, don't forget that we can also declutter the fridge. So a couple of rules of thumb. You have to throw away expired food. And also my recommendation to you is organize your fridge right? So decide on where your things that you use on a regular basis are going to live, right? So your milk might be on the door, your ketchup lives on the left side on a certain um, shelf. And what that's going to do is going to help you keep track of your food and when you're running low on things, which means you're also going to save money and not buying things that you already have somewhere in the back of the fridge or throwing away things that are past expiration date, okay? So dairy is recommended for top shelf. Uh, leftovers, make sure you keep them eye level because otherwise, you know, we forget what we have them. And then guess what? They get all kind of hairy and green and then we have to throw them away. Uh, meat should be at the bottom shelf with a dedicated drawer. Drinks and condiments on the doors. And my suggestion is also just label where the items should go so that way you and your kids and your husband know where things go. So when you start to see them running low, you put it on the grocery list, okay? Use clear glass storage containers. You can use them for the kitchen, you can use them for vanities, you can use them in the bedroom, right? The reason why is because they're sturdy and they're clear, you can see right what's in them, okay? Uh, refer to a food storage guide. I actually have it downloaded and I'm happy to email it to you. You can print it and slap it on your fridge because I'll let you in on the secret. Just because it does not have an expiration date does not mean it lasts forever. It does not, okay? So you can't just think, oh, it's gonna be for, it's gonna sit here and last me for a year. No, I don't think it's very good, a good idea to eat. So there's a general guide that FDA publishes that shows you roughly on how long things are good for and I found it helpful to keep it nearby. Next, I want you to open up your cupboard and I want you to look at your cups and plates and bowls. And I want you to ask yourself, how many of those do you really need, right? Because if we keep buying them or we keep getting them, it's time to go through what you have and examine them. You need to check the things that are cracked, that are chipped, right? You, I don't know if you realize, but when you, you know, when you swirl the spoon in your coffee, it eventually will take the paint off, right? Because you keep swirling it and you will look, if you look inside, sometimes you'll see the lines. You know, once things start to get used on a regular basis, they will start to wear off. And I don't think you want to eat things that are cracked or chipped. So it's time to throw those things away and either buy new ones or use the ones that you already have. The same suggestion I have is for you to go through your uh, utensils. Your plastic scrapers, your wood spoons, your uh, nonstick spoons, because with age and use, they do degrade. Okay, so check them out and see if they are starting to crack because then it's time for them to go. How many items do you guys have that you use once a year? I see it all the time when I'm working with my clients and they, you know, we go into the basement to check out, you know, what's there and they show us, oh yeah. This is my ice cream maker we use for 4th of July. This is my Thanksgiving platter. I have nothing against them, but I encourage you to use those things not just once a year, but all the time. What are you saving them for? 
right? Once a year for special occasion, if you truly love those dishes, right? And I'm also talking about like special items that all of us keep in our china cabinets. If you truly love those items, then use them, put them to good use, because otherwise you're saving them for someone or something, and then at the end, they don't get used at all. So I'm a big proponent from using and enjoying what we truly love and cherish. Um, a couple of other suggestions, some pantry racks, uh, organizers for your pots and pans, that's important so that way you don't scratch the surfaces. And also use some of the stackable kitchen organizers in your cabinets to, to use up all the space that you have, right? Because that's sometimes we, you know, especially if you have a small kitchen or maybe you are short on closet space, this is very important. All right, we're heading into the bathrooms. Okay, number one, I'm going to ask you to look through everything that you have in your bathroom and throw away stuff that you don't like, that you haven't used in over six months, including old medicine. Um, it's not recommended for old medicine to be flushed down the toilet. Uh, so a couple of places I found that um, Walgreens and CVS accept a lot of the unused medicine and they dispose of them properly. And also police departments will accept old medicine. So check those and please don't use them. Uh, the other thing with regards to creams and lotions and shower gels and so forth, you know, marketers spend millions of dollars every year on packaging and we are all suckers for it. I am one of them because right? when you see something that's beautiful packaging, sometimes you buy it just for that because it's nice to look at. But here's one thing that I'm going to remind you. One of the things that I encourage you to take away today is that you know i my 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 passion in my work is helping clients buy and sell a home so if you're telling me that you want to get into a bigger home and you want to sell your small condo i'm more than happy to help and if you're going to ask me that you need to downsize right sure i can help you however the body that we live in is the only home we have which means that the stuff you put on it and the stuff that you put in it that's it Right? We can downsize it, we can flip it, we can change it. So I encourage you when you are keeping the products and the things that you use on yourselves and what you put in your body is you kind of be mindful about it. And the same thing has to do with the old creams and lotions and so forth because they're not refrigerated, which means that they have a lot of chemicals in them. So I encourage you to purge everything every six months is what my recommendation is. All right, let's talk about how are we organizing everything. My suggestion to you is to set up your morning station and your evening station. It can be a shoebox, it can be a clear organizer that I mentioned for the kitchen. So think about your routine. Everything that you do in the morning is gonna go into one box. Everything that you do at night is gonna go in the other box and that's it. So there won't be any mess and you can use the stackable organizers, you know, have one box for you, one for your hobby, you know, one for the kids, everybody has their own and everybody stays organized. Um, makeup, ladies, same rule. Every six months we have to replace it. And yes, I'm guilty too of buying a sparkly eyeshadow for a New Year's party. I can't throw it away after six months because oh my God, I only swiped it once. But again, it's chemicals, let's just buy something fresh. And what I found useful to kind of just keep it simple, right? We're trying here to keep it simple. And my suggestion to you is utilize the sales in November, December, and January, right around the holidays and Christmas time to refresh your makeup and your lotions in the winter time. And then use 4th of July as your six month mark to do the same thing in the summer, right? Every six months, use the holiday as your little marker. Um, a couple of other suggestions for you, utilize your vanity doors to hold like organizer for storage of the things that you use on a regular basis. And I found the same kitchen uh, items, your storage bins, you can use them as well in the bathroom. They're clear and they're easy to clean, right? And that's what we're doing here is we're decluttering and we're trying to make things simpler and more efficient. So. All right, bedrooms, we're heading into the bedroom space. And uh, this is something important for you to think about, right? If you are having a hard time sleeping and you have a lot of stuff in your bedroom, that could be a cause of it. Remember when I mentioned to you the um, having the never ending loop of the stress and thinking about stuff? So if maybe this might be a good place for you to start if that is a concern to you, right? So in the bedroom, what we're trying to do is your peaceful place. It's 
place where you get away from the daily stuff, right? The daily things where you hide and just you, the space you use to recharge, okay? So let's talk about clothes. Average US woman keeps $500 worth of unworn clothes in your closet. Does that ring a bell? Probably 80% of your closet you don't wear, right? Because we kind of stick to our popular things, right? And that's what we do day in and day out. So I encourage you when you have some time to really look at your cl uh, closet with a new set of eyes, okay? So my, here's what my recommendation is. If you listen to Marie Kondo and some of the other gurus, they're like, if you haven't worn it for like six months, you need to get rid of it. And even to me, I have no problems donating and throwing things out. That was a little, that was fast. So I said, you know what? Two years is a good mark and here's why. It gives you two seasons to figure out whether this item you're going to keep and wear or not, right? If you haven't worn it in two seasons in two years, you're probably not going to wear it. So that way that gives you the peace of mind on donating it, right? Depending on if it's in new condition or not. So if it's out of style, if you don't like it, you don't need it, too small, too large, get rid of it. Uh, stained and torn clothes and if it's in bad shape, my suggestion is keep a couple of pieces because if you're working in the yard, you're cutting the grass, you don't want to wear good clothes, okay? Um, and uh, definitely use organizers. I can't tell you how many times I look at the closets and I help clients get things, you know, in order before they have to sell and they only use half of the closet. There's tons of organizer ideas that you can find in Home Depot and Lowe's where you can use everything. Like this is the picture in the middle that I have for you. Split your space and use this wisely and make sure you utilize all of your space on the floor, on the ceiling, and on the wall. So these are organizer kits are great. You can use the cube storage bins if you want, or you can use the same plastic ones from the kitchen and the bathrooms. They work just as well, and they come in a million different sizes, so I encourage you to use those as well. All right, we're heading into the living room and family room. Number one, if this is the place where you keep books in your books, bookshelf, it is time for you to go through them. Um, what I have found in my research, and I know this for myself, is that books and paper in general attract an enormous amount of dust, right? And we can only vacuum out stuff so much, even if you do it on a regular basis. And there's more and more people get allergic to dust. I don't know if you realize that or not. So if you're not feeling good in your home and you can't figure out why, maybe dust is your culprit. So my recommendation for books, anything that's outdated and I want it, that you're not going to read and you don't enjoy, you can donate them to the library. Um, recycle, here's a list because I get this question all the time. Textbooks, encyclopedias, and old magazines, you just need to recycle. Nobody's going to want them, unfortunately. And you know what? The same thing has to do with National Geographic, unfortunately. As much of a nice magazine it is, and it's wonderful to read, nobody wants it anymore. I encourage you to go through your electronics and cords and sort them out. And if you don't use it anymore, donate it. Uh, pillows and blankets, if you have furry kids, they love those. So go through them on a regular basis and you know, give yourself the permission to throw away the stuff that they truly uh, has outlived itself and buy some fresh ones, right? It doesn't mean that if you're throwing things out, you can get something fresh to use. And also go through your pictures. How many of us take a ton of pictures on our phones, but we never print them? And pictures are the best ways, yeah, yeah, the best way really is to enjoy something special, right? We're talking about enjoying where we live. And I encourage you to consider going to CVS and Walgreens because you can print pictures right on the spot, right there, and they're very inexpensive. And what I'm talking about here is if you're trying to do something easy, this is actually from my um, renovation workshop that we meant that we mentioned earlier. If you don't know what to do and how to put it together, you can buy this kind of type of wall frame art you just need to, to re, you know, kind of make yourself a list of what pictures you need to print and how big they need to be. And you create your own collage very inexpensively. It's probably going to cost you maybe 40 bucks. Yet, this is something that you're going to walk past every day, all day long, and it's going to put a smile on your face. And that is the goal, right? The goal is for you to enjoy your home and to enjoy the things that matter to you the most. Home office. 
All right, we're heading into the home office. Number one, again, the goal is to tackle paper. I already mentioned to you, United States Post Office delivers to us six days a week, rain or shine or snow. And that means that we guys need to stay on top of those things because if you don't, it's going to keep on growing. Doesn't that office look nice on the picture? Oh, it looks gorgeous. I hear you. And yes, you can have it too. So recycle old magazines and unneeded papers. Uh, filing away documents, I have some suggestions for you. Uh, if you have Gmail, you already have a virtual filing cabinet. Right, very easy to use. The space that they give you will hold thousands of documents. You just need a scanner. Right? And you can pick one up very inexpensively at Staples. You can buy one off of Amazon. Um, another suggestion, uh, I actually also use Dropbox. It's also free. Here's a link for you if you're not sure how to get it. So you can use a couple of different services. Um, and the good thing about these services is that, you know, paper fades. So if you keep paper and you don't take care of it, you know, think about some old receipts. They will fade, right? If you're looking at the receipt, you don't know where it's from. However, if you take a picture of it and you put that in your Google Drive in your virtual filing cabinet, you will always have it and, you, and, and you're not going to worry about it being damaged or sun bleached or bug eats it or, you know, something else. So use Unroll Me service tool to unsubscribe from unwanted emails and retailers. You know how bad sometimes it gets. They can start emailing you every day. I know it drives me bananas. I don't know about you, but I keep a tight control on my two email accounts because I use them on a regular basis. Um, sort through incoming mail. Somebody asked me that question, like, how do I do it? Um, I am very organized because I have to, and not just in my business, but also in my personal life. That's how I like it. That's how I keep saying and what I do is when the, when the mail comes in, I separate it in three piles. One is to go through, second pile is to shred, and the third pile is recycle. Make it simple, okay, three piles. And then on Saturdays, <coughs> I usually go through my pile of mail. I review things I, if I need to make notes, and then I scan it, and I put that in my Google Drive or my Dropbox, and then it goes into shred file or recycle file. That's it, every week, but you have to keep up on it. You can't just leave it alone. If you have a lot of junk mail, here's a website for you to go to to unsubscribe from catalogs and God knows what else that comes in our mail. So the goal really is to make your home office as comfortable and productive as possible. It is one of my favorite places in my house, and I also spend a lot of time, and especially now because I'm working from home, so in order for me to be productive and to feel great, I have to have clear space. So I hope that you found this helpful. All right, let's run into our garage and basement, okay? So my hope for you guys is to understand that in the garage and the basement, we have more space than just floor, okay? We also have ceiling and walls. I can't tell you how many times I see clients not utilizing those very, very valuable spaces, okay? So here are some suggestions for you. There are shelves that you can purchase at Home Depot as well as Amazon that you hang to your ceiling, okay? And my recommendation for you is to use those shelves for things that you don't use on a regular basis. It could be your holiday decorations, it could be your fishing gear, sports gear, whatever it is that fits your family. I recommend that you use clear totes, make sure that they're with lids, because clear totes, you know what's in them, and you can use Sharpie to write on them, and then you just stash everything up. And then look at the picture on the top right. You can use hooks under those shelves to hang just about anything, get it off the floor, make sure that it is safe, it's clean, and it's protected, right? You have bikes, you can have trailers, you can have um, strollers, everything and anything. Use your wall space, right? I also love these garage organizers. We have them in, in my shed as well. Uh, whether you have your gardening tools, whether it's uh, some kind of you know, car tools that may be needed for tinkering or maintenance, you can use these organizers for just about everything as well. Again, the goal is to get the stuff off the floor and ultimately the goal is for you to keep your car in, in your garage, right? So that's where we're trying to make room for the second biggest investment, right? If you own a home and then you own the car, that is your second biggest investment 
that we all have. All right, let's talk about papers, okay? Um, I know we're talking about decluttering and we're not talking about buying, but yes, there's a couple of things that I'm going to recommend that you buy. But these are the useful things, right? The number one, purchase an inexpensive shredder. This is the shredder that I currently have. I've had it for quite a few years and it still works great. It is from Amazon and it's $35. And you also need to buy uh, a box of trash bags. Something simple, it doesn't have to be anything any even fancy. But what I was told is that whatever you shred, you can't recycle because of ink. So it has to be thrown away, okay? So my recommendation for you is when you get your papers and you sort your mail and your paperwork, and you know that items have to be shredded, create a tote or a box or a bin or something. You're gonna put everything in it. Well, you know what I use? I actually use ShopRite paper bags. That's what I use. Right, and I actually have one bag that's almost full that I need to put out tomorrow for my recycle. That's what I use for my shredding and what I use for my recycle. Okay, so it doesn't have to be fancy. Um, my the question I always get is, what am I shredding? How do I know? My suggestion to use anything that has your name on it. If you have doubt, go ahead and shred it because it's always better be safe than sorry. All right, this is a very important page. My recommendation to use when you get a copy of it, um, if you want me to mail you a workshop uh, booklet for this page, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help you. I get this question all the time, whether you are young or you're older, or you're baby boomer, uh, you need to know how long we're keeping certain things, right? Because I think this is one of the mo most questions I get is, well, I don't want to throw it away because I don't know if I'm going to need it, right? So here's your rule of thumb. Okay, right? the first couple of categories, one month, one year, and up to through, you know, conditional time frames is easy to understand. So I'll let you guys read it on your own. The most important category is the one at the bottom where it says keep forever. Okay, this is huge, very, very important. So anything that is legal document, anything that you need to go to the government agency and office for, has to be kept either in a safety deposit box or safe. Okay, I want you to think about this list is probably not encompassing everything, but pension and retirement documents, your power of attorney, your birth and death certificates, your burial arrangements, college transcripts, diplomas, anything that God forbid if something happens to your home, these things are going to be safe because everything else can be replaced. Some of these documents cannot, okay? Example is um, last year, a friend of mine texted me a picture of a home that burned down three houses down from her, right? The husband left a cigar, they went out for dinner, they came back to a shell, right? And one of the first things that the insurance company is going to ask you say, okay, well, we need you to make a list of all your personal items that were in your home, right? And that brings me to the two items that are listed first under the Keep Forever category. It's called personal home inventory list in the video. So what I'm encouraging you to do, whether you're in the apartment, whether you're in home, you can take your phone, you can walk around and you do a video of everything that you have in each room. And that will help you create your inventory of your items. Because again, I got a bit something happens and you're working with the insurance adjuster. That is the way of how they create and figure out a way to reimburse you for the items that you lost. Right? Otherwise, you're going to have to sit in each room, close your eyes, and imagine what was it that you had. Okay? Very easy to do. You can create a, just a regular spreadsheet, right? and you can take your video, and you can keep it on your phone, and you can make a copy and keep it in your Google Drive, right? in your virtual filing cabinet, so that way it's there forever. That way, if something happens, it's less stressful for you to kind of get back into you know, putting things together after a life-altering event. So... This is a very important document here. As a, use that as a reference. Print it out, put it in your office or wherever you do your bills and your finances because that will help you keep your paperwork in check. All right, let's jump in and talk about what are we throwing and how are we doing and you know what are we doing, okay? So this is the slide that has to do strictly with throwaway, okay? I encourage you to 
use your trash day that you have on a regular basis, right? Whether your township does it on a weekly basis or is it twice a week, make it a point to throw something every time, right? Little by little, you can get rid of things. If you have a lot, create a pile somewhere and then just throw things a little by little. Uh, some townships have bulk days where you come in and you bring a bunch of things. So if that is something that is important to you, see when your township has it, put that on your calendar and start collecting your items maybe in the corner of your garage or maybe in your laundry room. Uh, let's see, 1-800-GOT-JUNK uh, and Junk King trucks. You see them everywhere, they advertise. What I can add, suggest to you is use them as your last resort because they're expensive. They don't tell you how much until they get there. And um, I've asked them before and they, can, they say that it's between six and $700 to fill a truck, right? So it's expensive. So I suggest that, uh, that you use them as a last resort, meaning that if you press for time and you have to get stuff out, they're probably great because they work late and they're available the same day. Electronic recycling and hazard trash days. Uh, we, you need to be careful here because we cannot put TVs and electronics to the curb anymore. That law went into effect a couple of years ago and I still see people putting things out. Your trash company won't take it. So my recommendation is check with Best Buy. Uh, lots of townships have electronic recycling days. County has uh, electronic recycling days. Find out when that is. If you have a lot of stuff to get rid of, you know, you can take some pieces to Best Buy. Otherwise, put that on your calendar and start making your pile. Uh, the same thing with hazard trash days as well. Things that are, you know, aerosols, paint thinner, insect repellents, and even the specialty light bulbs that are very popular right now. You can't just throw them in the trash. They have to be disposed properly. So check on the days. Our furniture. What I can tell you guys is that overall, furniture is the hardest to get rid of. So if you have a lot of furniture and you're trying to downsize and you're trying to make room in your home, that is where you need to start first. Um, and the reason being is that what I am seeing is with, with younger generations, people are becoming less attached to stuff and big things and they want more space and they want less, you know, they, they're looking for less space to live in, which means less furniture. So a lot of the baby boomers that I'm working with, they, you know, they're, they're, they, it's a reality check for them and it's kind of harsh for them because they think that their family members are going to take a lot of their stuff. And then when they talk to their kids and their grandkids, they realize that they don't want most of the stuff that they have. So that's the other reality check that I have with my clients is that if they think that everything in their house, their family is going to be happy to take, unfortunately, that's not true. That's not the case. So Another option is Baxter, which is a little bag, which looks little, but actually can fit a lot. So if you're doing some kind of a project in your home renovation, and maybe it's more than what you can fit in your trash can, consider buying a bag and then waste management will come and pick it up and you can fit quite a few in that bag. So you probably see it on, on the roads periodically. Um, it's like literally like a shopping bag, but it's huge. So they have, they have like a little crane come in and then it picks it up. All right, let's talk about donations. Here's a good guide for you here, right? Uh, our go-to stores are the Habitat, the Restore Home Front, right? All of, the, all of these places. Uh, and Stephanie, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I do know for sure is that, especially in the summertime, and especially now, these places are extremely busy. So if you are making plans for these stores to come and get your stuff, don't think that if you go into call today, they're going to be available next week. A lot of times, you, especially in the summer and the busy season, they're so busy that you may have to make that appointment a couple of months ahead. So just kind of plan accordingly. And we thought Restore runs about anywhere from a week to two weeks, depending. Um, okay. with, with the pandemic, scheduling is a little tougher, but it's definitely worth, definitely worth donating it because someone can reuse it for sure. Absolutely, absolutely, I agree. So I gave you some other suggestions, you know, if you wanted to be more specific about the things that you have, rather than, you know, if you don't want to just donate it to your local store, uh, here's some options for you for different things. I kind of collected everything over time that I found people were asking me about what they can do with. So. All right, 
Let's talk about things that are important to us that have a lot of meaning that we tend to hold on to, right? I get this all the time. Well, I have things from my grandmother. I have things from my aunt, you know, and then all of us feel guilty thinking that we're going to throw this stuff away. We're somehow, you know, letting our family down, okay? So I did some more research on that, and here's some suggestions for you. Uh, if we're talking about like greeting cards, kids' artwork, keepsakes and things from loved ones, here's some suggestions. You keep the best pieces for yourself. If you have family members who would like to take some pieces, by all means. Um, then it's recommended that you take the photos of the other pieces and then you donate them and recycle, right? So, and I encourage you to think of donation as not something that you're throwing away, but you are giving an opportunity to someone else to find something precious for them so that way it helps them and makes them happy. Uh, photos and albums, this is huge. We, we all have tons of them. And you know, with time, photos get yellow and albums fall apart. So a couple of suggestions for you. With the local library, you can scan things to the USB drive. You just need to buy a little flash, flash drive. Uh, you can do that for free at the library. If you have a lot, Costco, and some other services online, there's companies out there where you can drop things off or you can mail your pictures and they will scan everything for you, put them on like a CD or a flash drive again, and then send everything back to you. So the flash drive, think of that as an external little filing cabinet. And you can also transfer the copies of these pictures to your virtual like Google Drive and keep it there as well for safekeeping. With regards to DVDs, CDs, and VHS, so VHS, the tapes, nobody wants them anymore, unfortunately, so go ahead and recycle. But DVDs and CDs, you absolutely can donate because people love them. All right, let's talk about selling who can help you. Uh, some traditional routes, we have eBay and Etsy. Etsy is the more creative side of eBay where people are selling things that are homemade and custom made, okay? You can order clean out bags. There's companies out there where you can send things in and they will sell them for you in consignment and then you know, give you a portion of the proceeds and whatever they don't sell, they can just donate on your behalf. Uh, Craigslist, Facebook sale groups, if you're on social media, are awesome. Uh, apps on your phone that I've used on a regular basis are OfferUp, Lego, and Oodle. Uh, if you're a member of next door neighborhoods, depending on where you live, those neighborhoods are great as well to get rid of things. Poshmark is for things that are a little bit more um, on a designer scale. If you have some pieces, you can try them. That's what they, they uh, specialize in. And of course, garage sale, yard sale, you can host things online or you can hire a company to help you do that for you as well. And of course, you know, we always talk about helping, right? Because this is, may not be something that you want to tackle on your own. So, you know, enlist your family, enlist your friends if you can. If you don't have anyone, don't think that there's nobody out there who can't help you. We have uh, recommendations for personal organizers, just for some muscle. If you need some guys to help you get stuff out of the attic, maybe out of the basement, let us know. We can help you recommend. And there are companies out there who specialize in helping you from start to finish, right? And, you know, if I had, if I had an estate, when someone passed away and they needed help with the whole house, that is what they do. They set up, they take pictures, they provide security, they sell everything, and then they charge you a commission, which is a percentage of the total sale. All right, your action plan, okay? We are coming back with a notebook, okay? The goal is for you to jot down some things, and here are some questions for you, okay? What's bothering you? Why do you want to declutter? right? Why are you here today? Okay. What are your concerns? You know, why are you doing this? Where, which room in your home you may want to start? If you think you may need help, make a list of the people that you can ask. If you need some suggestions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and ask. Uh, do you need to hire an organizer to help you sort and donate? I just had a lady from a workshop reach out to me a couple weeks ago and she said, Olga, I need stuff. I just need a couple of guys to help me and get stuff out of the basement. I need them to put it in my living room, just line it up so I can get started, right? Sometimes it's like simple things like that is what's holding us back. So if that's all it is, we can help with that too. 
Um, I suggest also purchasing, or if you already have painter's blue tape, it's great because it's peelable, right? Because you use that for painting. I recommend using that on the furniture, right? If you're trying to decide what you're keeping, what you're not keeping, it's great to put a piece of tape on that piece of furniture and right on there, whether it's to donate, whether it goes to a certain family member or it's staying. Okay, so you can use that to help you kind of visually organize things in your home. And then of course, you guys, it all has to start with a date and time, right? You can't, you, if you're going to sit there and try and plan forever, nothing is ever going to happen. You have to actually pick up your foot and put it in front of the other and get started. And that appointment is with yourself is extremely important, right? If you had a doctor's appointment, you're not going to skip it when it gets to be, you know, time to leave. You're like, eh, I just don't feel like going. Eh, it'll be fine. So same thing with this appointment. You're going to respect yourself and you're going to keep that appointment, okay? And I hope that you can use this handy room guide, my room guide that is in this workbook to help you and guide you through and just, you know, just little at a time. That's the game plan. So here's what's next. If you need help, if you need some muscle, whatever it may be, you need an organizer because you're gonna to get too distracted when you're starting to go through those photos, please let us know. We can help you, you know, help you uh, find someone who can help you, you know, stay on track. And of course, everything else has to do with uh, my work. If you need help with anything that has to do with your home, updating consultation, if you wanted to speak in private about anything that maybe is on your mind, please let us know. So that's what I got for you today. Now what I'm going to do is I will stop sharing the screen. Again, you're going to get a copy of this workbook. And now I welcome anyone to unmute yourself or if you want to uh, write down some questions in the chat box, uh, you're more than welcome to put the questions out there and or if you want to just shout them out. All right, so Sun said the Unroll Me tool is awesome. Yes, it is. And if you use it on a regular basis, because I found that people add you to the weirdest stuff. And I'm like, I never signed up for this. So I just keep, you know, keep track of it. And if it gets overwhelming, Unroll Me is a good tool. Maria is asking, what do you do with style vases that your mom bought as antiques? You can always check with some organizers and some of the you know people that specialize in figuring out if the items are really antiques or not, right? If you think that they're antique, you can always check and see if they are. And you know, some older generations may think they are antiques, but maybe they're not. Because if you know, think of it this way: during the baby boomer generation, people loved crystal, they loved uh, those figurines, they loved, you know, I can't even think of other things, but if all of us, all of them put the same stuff up for sale because that was, you know, special and that was uh, antique back then, what's going to happen is it's going to overwhelm the market and it's not going to be considered uh, precious and, you know, expensive anymore because everybody else had it and now everybody's selling. So she she paid for them as antiques so did she uh, did she think that they were antiques is that what you mean you can always get it appraised and see if it's truly an antique and if if you don't want to keep it you can try and sell it as an antique but i can tell you that in all my years in doing this being in business it's very rarely that you know something truly precious and antique is found so Olga, is it pretty easy to do you just take something into an antique shop? How do you connect to an, an antique appraiser? I have a couple of people that I know that specialize. Some of them offer, you know, free consultation. Um, some of them might say, you know, if you have a lot of stuff, I will come over for an hour and I will just walk around. You can show me and point things out to me and I can tell you whether it's worth something or not. Okay. If you're talking about um, a lot of things, there are some, you know, big houses that they can come in and take everything and then sell it as an auction and do it that way. So I think the answer is depends on how many pieces you have. 
So Maria saying the price she paid is stuck on the bottom. Depends. It depends on what it is. It depends on how old it is. So a lot of the times Google may be your best friend, right? If you Google this item, you might be able to see who else is selling and how much you can try eBay and see if anyone else is selling, how much they're asking. And that kind of may give you some initial idea on whether you have something truly special. It might be something commonplace. How easy is it to recycle VHS tapes? What do you, do you have to take the tape out of it? No, you just, just throw them in a recycle container. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sun says, I have my office and use the same room for clothes storage. The issues I have is that clothes are all over the place. Do you recommend puppies or what you recommend for large family clothing organizing? Food storage. Do you have a closet that you store, or is it that your closet is too small and you have to store clothes in the regular room? Is how I'm reading this. I think <laughs> it's it's actually like a, a small room that I use as my office, where uh -huh. there's you know a little bit of a um, closet space, but I use this because I don't have enough room. So I use this one room to store everybody's clothes. So let's say if they get out of shower, this is the room that they're gonna come in to get their clothes out. The issue is I had one of those cubbies from like Ikea and I just felt like things were still all over the place and we can never find out where is what and what is going on. And I, and I see like, um, you know, shelving's behind you. So, you know, I'm, I'm staring at it thinking, maybe something like that, you know, like, <laughs> Those are actually bookshelves. You know, because I'm doing laundry, like two loads of laundry every day, and I feel like I'm doing the same clothing every single day because they're all just being thrown on the floor. So, <laughs> My suggestion is you start with the closet space that you have now and see if you can more efficiently organize what you have. Mm -hmm. Seeing if you, you know, see if you use the storage all the way up to the ceiling. You know, people don't use that space. Mm -hmm. on the floor can you maybe get some cubbies for the shoes or can you you know i i actually have a regular dresser in my closet oh you know okay. i because That's i i didn't need it and i was like I, you know what i need it i have in my um closet under my stairs which is my coat closet i have a regular dresser and in that regular dresser my top drawers all my hats and scarves my second drawer is all of my uh, what else was there? winter stuff. And then I have my uh, tablecloths in there. And then the bottom drawer is for flip-flops. Like, you know, <laughs> but it's all organized, right? So if you have a spare dresser, or if you have something like that, you can just put that in your closet too and use it that way. Right? Mm. If, you know, if you're on the budget and you don't want to spend money and you buy that organizer, you, you know, use what you have and maybe just, right, right. the goal is to organize the space that you have. And then if you're still running out of space, then maybe you can get some kind of wardrobe. You know, even Ikea has those that you can put in your uh, office room where, you know, you have to open the, the door to, um, the doors to get stuff out. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I could show you how my room looks and you'll be like, whoa, <laughs> And you know what, sometimes that's the way it gives me idea because you, you explain to me what you have and what I'm thinking you have in your head may not be what you actually have. Like I'm oh, yeah. thinking like a pile of stuff here. And like, <laughs> oh, that's exactly how it is right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so Jess has some su suggestions about the wardrobes that she put. Oh, okay. So check that out and see if that's an option. You know, if you have a small space and your closets are really small, it's even more important to use every space in your closet that you have. And, you know, that's, I have, I have uh, dressers in a couple of my closets actually, because it's sturdy, right? It has the drawers and it's easy to maneuver and it fits a lot of things. Mm, I see. Uh, it's just feeling, I found a rolling cart with three long fat, bags that are like for, look like they were in the laundry room I found them outside somebody's trash 
and okay. I clean them up and I have my off season clothes in that and whatever I have extra I got a couple of uh, little laundry baskets from the dollar store oh. to try to make space because it yeah it's like a clothes monster it was like a clothes monster in my closet too from mm -hmm. this clothes I was wearing now and then you know whatever now it's winter clothes that are in that laundry basket and jeans and sneakers and stuff that I don't really wear in the summer. So I, I just tried to find stuff where I could that would was cost effective and also would work just getting some of the stuff organized somehow. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you can always use the clear totes as well for clothes and for sure. Yeah. Because you know, they're sturdy and you can stack them. Thank you, yeah, Lane. Hi, idea. Lane. Hi, son. How are you? <laughs> All right. What else? Anybody else has any other suggestions, ideas? I think, you know, treasure shopping and, a re and obviously I'm going to uh, suggest the Habitat Restores, but really in any of the thrift stores around. Um, our restore recently had these wooden craft boxes that that their people have painted or stained what i end up doing i've left them plain but we renovated our house almost four years ago and packed everything up and we we're pack rats and there's six of us in the house and i've had cardboard boxes next to my bed for just almost as long because i haven't gone through to put, take it back out to put the pictures back up on the wall which so these craft boxes were five dollars each and i got a, i got six of them and now it's sort of like this sort of side table thing where I've jammed like all my favorite books I all my all the pictures and notes from the kids are in one and you know cards from my husband over the years are just all in there so I have them but it looks nicer and I, I was able to get rid of all the junk that I collected because I'm really good at just if I hide it I don't have to worry about it but I know <laughs> it's there but it still bothers me right um, so the thrift, the thrift stores and restores are great like that because you never know what's there that you can repurpose and like furniture, like I have a, a bureau in our closet as well for all the sweaters because you can't fit them anywhere. My husband's running clothes that really just take up space. So mm -hmm. great idea to put the put the dresser in the in the closet, and then I've got an extra sh you know stuff place on top to to put things. So and you know if you put stuff in those dressers, they, they don't fall over, right? Because <laughs> otherwise they kind of keel over, and you're like really. The sweaters are tough. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And I have art and pictures from the kids that, I mean, some of it I've gone through and I've gotten rid of extra pictures. I mean, there's no reason to have like 10 of the same pictures from, you just keep a couple. Mm -hmm. I found in a thrift store, it is like a folding picture. It's wood but it looks like you put eight by tens and it like, it's three of them that like fold in. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I repurposed like that. that to put pictures in and some of the drawings from my kids in there. That's awesome. So, and then I saw actually Stephanie at Restore <laughs> and I oh, didn't wow. buy it. I didn't buy it because I haven't moved yet. <laughs> <laughs> they, but they did have, a couple of the long frame things that you could fit like five by seven pictures in on there. So something else to not to put so many holes in the wall or just have pictures frames hanging around that you, it, it'll actually look like an art, like a. Yeah. I love that idea. Something more organized, like all in one spot. And like, I've seen stuff like that and that, Again, I didn't buy it, but <laughs> I was really tempted. <laughs> you know, thrift stores always have uh, picture frames. Every time I go in, because I love to grab books, that's where I get some of the stuff that I love to read and I collect in the back, is, and I always see frames. So you can even get creative, you know, just because it says eight by 10, there's two pictures side by side. And yeah, yeah, that could find some, yeah, find some great frames there. That's a great idea for some of the pocket pictures that I have left over. Mm -hmm. Have it out, but not all this clutter of frames all over the place. And then get some of the extra pictures that I do have and just get rid of those. 
the yeah, more. I, 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 I've only gone through like two grades. I have so many pictures. Oh my God. <laughs> and you can always even get a cork board. You know, and oh. you, you well, can that's an idea. do a cork board and you can put a couple of nails and you swing a uh, thread between two nails and then you use uh, closed pins, right? And you can alternate pictures. I just like I was suggesting on the collage page where you can do the picture, you know, the holiday photos or the holiday cards that you get and you can display them that way and you can swap out and do a different season, whatever it is that makes you happy, but it's a great way to display some of the things that are important to you too. Yeah, it doesn't take up a lot of space. That's good. Oh, my kids are going to kill me. <laughs> oh, mom, you're hanging her stuff up more. <laughs> If it makes you happy, you do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love it. It's funny, thinking all the pictures of it reminds me that refrigerator, if you still have a traditional refrigerator, is a place for clutter. Yes. And that's something that I, every few months, I'm like, okay, it's a mess. I need to just stop. And like the school calendars, I'm like, okay, we're not, you know, that's last year. Let's clean it out. And the coupons yeah. that we're saving or the, Random thank you note that want to make sure. Yes, so that's a, that's another spot that could get really messy really quickly. You know, some of the new refrigerators are not magnetized. Right. <laughs> I I still have an old one. <laughs> yes. All right. Anybody else? Oh, we have a comment. Yep. Oh, uh, flat pack shelving units are helpful. Have someone that are steel structure with fiberglass shelves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actually, the shelves that I use in my office is a track that my husband put up, and they're regular, you know, like brackets like this. And they're adjustable, so that way if I need to adjust my shelves, so you can do the same thing in your storage. You can do the same thing in your storage areas. If you're looking for some simple shelving, you don't have to buy pre-made things. You can actually buy one big board that will cut it to the size that you need and make it adjustable. You know, I'm talking about your laundry, your pantry, your office, uh, and it's an expensive way to kind of get everything set up and organized. Oh, this. Yes, I have heard of 52-week organization schedule. You know, one of the things I everybody hated me for on Facebook was when. Uh, corona rolled out, I rolled out a decluttering plan for the month of April. So every day in the month of April, I posted a challenge. You had to go do one drawer, right? And then you, I suggested, can you please post before and after, right? So that way there was some accountability for it. And everybody, including my coworkers, were like, did you organize your whole house? I'm like, yes, I did. Because I have to keep busy. So <laughs> it helped me, you know, kept me accountable. So what Stacy's talking about is the 52 week organization schedule. You can Google it and the, those printouts and those printables, there's tons of them. You know, that's going to help you get on track and do something every day where you don't have to think about where you're going. It's a great way as well. Well, this was absolutely awesome. Olga, thank you so much. I so appreciate your sharing your expertise and Jessica keeping things running from behind the scenes. So thank you as well. Uh, thank You're you for, awesome. for, for reaching out to us to, to share this awesome information because it's I have a blast. lot of work to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a blast. So this is super fun. And thank you everyone for joining us tonight. If you still have any more questions, feel free to reach out to Olga and I look forward to getting the materials that you're going to provide to us by email. Thank you. Absolutely. Hope to see you guys next month for some renovations on the budget. Yes. September 12th. Those are next month. Uh, co-supported by Habitat Black. So Olga and Jessica, thank you. Olga, you're, you're phenomenal. I appreciate all the great energy and great ideas. My pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night. We'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.